I V M. All right, welcome guys to another awesome episode of I V M Likes. I'm Antrik Stucker, your host for this episode. Uh, joining me today on this episode is Costa Banerji. Hi, Costa. How are you? Hey, Antrik. Uh, how have you been? All great, man. Thanks for coming. Has coming on this episode, and also joining us, also joining Costa and me on this awesome episode is Almas Virani, who is the host of Beyond Cliche, one of the shows on IVM Podcast Network. Uh, hi, Almas. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? All great. Thank you again so much, guys, for, for joining us on this episode. This is this is a lot of fun. This is a very uh, important topic, I would say, that we're going to discuss in the second half of this episode. Uh, I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, thank you so much for coming on this episode. uh how this how this show works is in the first half we'll be recommending some cool piece of pop culture um, be it a movie or a tv show or a book uh that we have recently checked out and we would like you guys to check out as well because we feel it's it's freaking awesome and you should you should check it out and in the second half we will be discussing a more pertinent pop culturally related topic on this episode we'll be talking about movies and shows that break gender stereotypes or that we feel uh, are breaking gender stereotypes in some regard or the other that's why we have almas to talk about that on this episode which we will get to again in the second half uh let's start with just the recommendations round uh kostov would you like to start us off man uh yeah sure so uh basically i'm actually hooked to the show called the wire i'm sure a lot of people know about it because it's one of the most famous uh, shows out there um but yeah. i've just start the, the one uh, with uh, the one with tons of uh, i mean it's a it's a it's a, like a black cop show right like an african american cop show Uh, yeah yeah so they it's not just about like uh, like a cop show it's like the entire uh, plot and the whole sequence to the entire series uh, around baltimore uh, around the housing projects and how it was back in the day uh, really sums up the entire uh, thing man i mean it's one of the best shows that i've actually i'm really hooked into like i, I really don't get the time to watch it but i, I any time when i log into netflix uh, netflix i actually you know do it man i've heard Netflix that it is uh, yeah hot star. like uh, like if if My if you bad. were to watch uh, if you were to like read or watch or uh, see any listicle like top 10 shows like tv sh- american tv shows of all time uh, wire is definitely on that list is what i've heard correct uh, again i have not seen this and i've been it's yeah, been on my list it comes out of the likes of the sopranos yeah exactly that is so correct. cool you should definitely uh, watch it it's about uh, it's like it's about drug related crimes or uh, is it is it uh, yeah yeah uh, it, it is a drug related crime where uh, all the black uh, people around baltimore how they function the entire you know uh, the entire drug syndicate and how they dealt with the cops and you know uh, more than just the story behind it from the cinematography the entire uh, c- plot the entire flow to the entire uh, uh, series is just phenomenal is there man. a character who just says she <laughs> like that's him saying shit we just go she <laughs> Oh she yeah. <laughs> is that character does that yeah. uh, that's like a police inspector does that Shit. yeah <laughs> she uh, yeah. I, i think I'm, i think there's a compilation of all the moments in the series where he says she <laughs> and uh, there's a compilation on youtube for that if you guys want to go check it out and have a good laugh i just elba is in it by the way sorry it is elba i just elba oh, really yeah wow was this the first yeah. thing he was in uh i i don't know about that but yeah he was pretty young back then man that's so cool <laughs> You know Idris Elba is yeah. uh British? What? Isn't he? I think he is. I could be wrong. Uh but I'm pretty sure I've heard him in interviews and he sounds British in interviews. Uh why does he just has a killer oh. American accent? Uh is why he gets a lot of American roles. Where can oh, people right. check out The Wire, man? The Hot Star. I'm actually watching it on The Hot Star. Uh Disney so also, I yeah. have all the streaming services. Yeah. I have all the stri- Yeah, yeah, I can oh. hear you. Yeah, I have all the streaming oh, services. Oh, wow, stop showing there. off. Subscribe to <laughs> I I'm not showing off I'm I'm telling you I legit don't watch e- any of them like I don't get the time okay, enough however my monthly subscription uh, money has been deducted like you know mm, so nice. <laughs> you know uh, just yeah. a quick side note even I am so in I'm subscribed to a lot of these streaming services but the one I end up using the most and I'm so uh, thankful that I decided to I finally pay for it is YouTube premium because i literally watch youtube the most man yeah oh, wow. it's great dude yeah i can like minimize the screen and shit so, it's great so it's my girlfriend's birthday today and i was oh, stop thinking, showing off oh, again man what the thing to her <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so youtube premium subscription sounds like one of the things that i could add dude, on that's a this. terrible Thanks, gift but... don't do that for not on her birthday <laughs> <laughs> hey i said one of the things i'm giving her multiple things because i'm bad at gifts anyway okay. you know cool a way to put yourself down <laughs> this is great 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, let's uh, move on to Almas. Uh, Costa recommended The Wire. You can check it out on Disney Hotstar. Uh, Almas, would you like to give us your recommendation? Yes, I have a couple of them. Yes, uh, the one that uh, I actually binge watch quite a bit is when I started my podcasting journey. And this one like popped up right in front of my face on Amazon Prime. It's called God yep. Friended Me. I don't know if any one of you watched this one. It is just so amazing. Uh, so there's a protagonist called uh, Miles and he's this African-American guy yeah. who apparently gets friend requests on Facebook from somebody called God. So there's, there's someone, <laughs> there's an account called God that's sending him friend requests. Oh, wow. Okay. And he's suggesting friends. So this account is apparently suggesting people to him and those people just automatically turn up in his life. It's like the universe is conspiring to send these people into his life. Oh, wow. And wow. they are all him and Miles goes out of their way to help them. And he actually is, you know, lands up creating a podcast called The Millennial Prophet. And he is the son of the, the Bishop of New York. So there's this angle of whether there is actually a concept of God or, you know, this is something else. And while wow. this entire uh, say synchronous in his life, there's a there's a deeper realization that happens. It's a pretty big show that I like to watch. So it's got some spirituality, it's got some fun, it's got suspense, and it's also got a lot of technology because obviously there is somewhere, you know, trying to use AI, trying to figure out stuff and sending him Facebook requests. So that's what this is about. Pretty wow, cool. This is such... It's got two seasons by the way. Yeah. So I was recently oh, cool. about fifteen days ago I was watching season two. Yeah, wow, this is so cool. Is this a very recent show? I, it must be a very and recent both show. of you are quiet. <laughs> no, no. Is this a very recent show? <laughs> no, no. It's been. It's it's not very old. Not really. It's got season two. Yeah, it's got uh, two seasons. Uh, what? What? 2018. What? First episode uh, aired on 2018. Mm, 30th September. What an amazing idea. And the final episode was on 26th. It is. You just killer. You should just check it out. It's very nice. Yeah, it's and it's stuff. on Netflix, yeah. right? No, no, Amazon Prime. It's an Amazon I Prime. am so an Amazon Prime fan. Oh, okay. So no, <laughs> no, no YouTube and no hot stuff for me. For me, it is Amazon Prime. Um, I have another show there which is a little more popular. So okay. I know I sound like so, I've come from some other planet when no, I this recommend is, uh, that. So whenever people on the show give uh, more than one recommendation, we call it the recommendation. And uh, how uh-huh. it goes. So this is your recommendation. Please go ahead. <laughs> ah, okay. So the recommendation that I have is a very popular one, and it's called Four More Shots, Please. I don't know. Oh yeah, we are well. Yeah. yeah. Ah, oh, now everyone's <laughs> sort of pitching in, <laughs> right? So, so I, I got Amazon Prime subscription because of that, and I've never used it after that. I, I never oh, even wow. watched the entire thing. Ah, okay, cool. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. By the way, recently I also had the director of Four More Shots, Please, Anu Menon, on my show. Oh. So. Uh, oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Uh, we should check yeah, out it's, that it's a pretty cool one. So, uh, so yeah. this former shots, please. Um, I'm sure you watched it, right? And for me, I mean, it's it, there's just so much of my stuff in there related yeah. to stereotypes, feminism, all of that. So I pretty much love that, and it's fun too. Oh, very cool! Uh, two great shows. I am. Uh, I've seen a bit of former shots, but I am so excited to check out. Uh, what was that one? There was a, a God friended me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna check that out because again, the concept is yeah. just so cool. so unique. Uh, yeah. And you know what the interesting part is, Antriksh? My son discovered it and he's like, Mama, let's sit and watch this. Oh, and did he, we watched it together as a family. Did did he did, did you ask him what are you watching right now? And he just goes, God friended me. Like what? No, God <laughs> yeah. friended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. You must be blessed. Yeah. <laughs> wow. God yeah. friended you, God unfriended so, me today. That nice. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> that was it. And that actually happens. Huh? So after a point in time, God unfriends him as well. Oh, really? That's hilarious. Wow. This is... <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> so what, <God. laughs> uh, that's very, very cool. You can check out both these shows that Alma's recommended. Uh, God Friended Me and uh, uh, Four More Shots on Amazon Prime. Uh, getting to me, I would like to recommend... There is a sh- there's an HBO show. Uh, it, it ran for three seasons, but now it has ended. I think uh, the last season came out in 2019, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the, there's a show called Crashing uh, by comedian mm-hmm. Pete Holmes. So uh, listeners of the show know that I'm a huge stand-up comedy fan. I do stand-up on the side myself. So I just love watching anything which is stand-up uh, comedy related. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly that. This is made by comedian, uh, uh, by comedian Pete Holmes. Uh, directed by and produced by Judd Apatow, also a comedian himself, uh, and also like a huge force in uh, production and direction and some of the most uh, uh, modern comedy classics 
have been made by Judd Apatow for say like uh, he's been involved with Anchorman, he has been involved with uh, uh, Superbad and all these amazing mm-hmm. amazing shows, amazing sorry movies. Coming back to Crashing, Crashing basically follows the career of a new comedian played by Pete Holmes, who's who, mm-hmm. in, in reality Pete Holmes is a huge comedian, but on the show mm-hmm. he plays like a newbie comedian starting out mm-hmm. in his career, and uh, his he just divorced his wife. Uh, basically, mm-hmm. one day he came home and found that his wife was cheating on him. He divorced, like separates from her, divorces her. And mm-hmm. uh, so now he uh, wants to follow a career in stand-up, but he doesn't have a place to stay. So he ends up crashing every single night at a different, com- like established comedian's house. So like, for instance, Sarah Silverman ah. is on an episode. Bill Burr is on an episode. John Mulaney is on an episode. Uh, so each each episode, he's basically wow. crashing on another person's couch. And then those people become part of the show. Uh it's great. Just R.T. Lang is a huge uh, supporting cast member on the show. Uh, R.T. Lang has had his own problems with, uh, like huge problems famously, uh, notoriously rather, about with drugs and snorting a lot of cocaine and heroin and all that. Uh, so I, again, so, so then uh, R.T. Lang's uh, arc is dealing with those demons uh, on the show. So again, just a very cool, very simple, very uh, uh, qu- quite funny in a lot of places show, crashing, uh, crashing on HBO. Uh, that's one. And the second thing, if I can quickly talk about, is a YouTube uh, is a YouTube podcast. It's on YouTube that I've, that I've been watching mm-hmm. it, but I'm sure you can w- check it out on any other podcasting app. The uh, the podcast is Kenny Sebastian, the com- comedian Kenny, Kenny Sebastian's new podcast called Simple Ken, where uh, mm-hmm. uh, Kenny basically just answers questions that his uh, fans or listeners of the podcast ask him. And each episode is just, uh, it doesn't have a particular structure, but mm-hmm. uh, conversations devolve from those questions. Uh, as the episode goes on. So supposing the question, the question was, okay, hey, my, uh, um, my boss is, uh, I don't know, my boss is like very mean to me and not paying my salaries in time. What do I do? And uh, mm. so the episode will talk about, okay, uh, you should do uh, one. Okay. Uh, he'll talk about the episode will de- evolve from that. But the number one uh, criteria for anything that Kenny says on that episode is he can never give the audience advice. It's never life advice. He'll just talk about it. It, he says it applies to me, but it's basically life advice <laughs> if you want it, mm-hmm. if you want to take it that way. And uh, another little fun fact, if you're listening to the podcast, not from episode one, which I've been doing, if you uh, listen to it from any other episode than episode one, there is, uh, he calls the podcast a long recording of himself talking because he says, I don't want to call it a podcast because there are podcasts that are a dime a dozen. So this is a long recording of me talking and thanks for tuning in to a long recording of me talking. <laughs> That's uh, just mm-hmm. a fun fact. That this is Kenny, Kenny being Kenny. Being Kenny man. Uh, that's, yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of our uh, the first half of this episode uh, with two recommendations from me, which were uh, Kenny Sebastian's Simple Ken podcast uh, and uh, Crashing on HBO, the HBO TV show called Crashing. Uh, Almas, uh, could you just run down quickly what you recommended as well? Yeah, so God Friended Me. Yeah. That's very difficult to forget, isn't it? God Friended, <laughs> God friended Me. friended me, yeah. Right. Both the seasons uh, on Amazon Prime and of course, uh, four more shots, please. Again, two seasons. My favorite is season one. Okay. That's again Amazon Prime. Okay, very cool. Kasta, what were you, man? So, uh, everyone's come up with the recommendation. I have, I'm the only one with so a single recommendation. Go for the second one. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I'm re-watching a couple of uh, old shows from which one of them is one of the um, uh, very famous... Uh, it's two and a half, <laughs> man. Uh, which I can't just <laughs> get <laughs> enough of. But, uh, you know... Uh, it's, it's funny, man. Yeah. Charlie Sheen, yeah. Madis yeah. Prime, sure. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Have you guys uh, seen the roast? This is, again, small side note. Have you guys seen the roast of Charlie Sheen? The Comedy Central roast of Charlie Sheen? Uh, no. I think I have. Have you seen Anger Management though? Yeah, I've seen a couple of episodes. No, I haven't. It's good fun. Yeah. But, yeah, no, no. Yeah, coming, yeah. coming back quickly to the roast of Charlie <laughs> Sheen, there was a joke on uh, that made by, uh, I think it was made by Seth MacFarlane, who was the roast master also of that of that roast. And he basically goes, uh, how much coke can Charlie Sheen do? Enough to kill two and a half men. <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> just, just a great joke <laughs> um, so yeah the, thank you so much the, the cost of again the two things you recommended were The Wire and um, of course the two is it uh, on half Netflix half, uh, yeah it is there on Netflix it's there on Amazon Prime I don't know about no. Hotstar and YouTube uh, we don't know yeah. YouTube we don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll soon find out <laughs> okay very cool uh, thank you so much for this awesome half uh, of this long recording of, of us talking and we'll see you on the other side Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 
want to let you all know about two new shows that we've launched this week. The first one is Millennial Athlete, hosted by Tanvi and Shlok. Both of them are, you know, they spent their life playing badminton, and they know a lot of athletes, and they want to talk about the particular challenges that athletes face. Really, really great conversations. Do definitely check that out. The other show that I wanted to mention to you that we launched this week is Non Curry. Non Curry is a show about the, it's about food and the history of food and the economics around food and its consumption and all that kind of stuff. It's a really, really interesting conversation. It's hosted by Sadaf, the author chef and former Master Chef India finalist, and Archit, who is a researcher who writes on behavioral science and economics. Definitely, definitely worth checking out. Besides that, we had a great week as always, right? You know, great stuff on all the normal shows. Do check those out. But with that, let me get you back to your show. All right, welcome back, guys, to the second half of the show where we talk about the most important thing, which is breaking gender stereotypes in movies, in TV shows, in books, or whatever media you guys want to talk about. Just quickly, off the top of my head, there is a this is a great time to be talking about this because there are a lot of gender stereotypes being broken in America right now by Kamala mm-hmm. Harris, who is uh, in the running to become the next vice president of America, and uh, I think that's a great place to start off. Firstly, what do you guys think? Who's winning this election? It's it's which is being still being the votes are still being counted. What do you guys think? You you want to know who we want? Who, who we you want? want to win? <laughs> <laughs> who we think is winning? Uh, again, I think right now, uh, wouldn't the answer be the same to both uh, those I questions? I don't think so. We don't know. We don't know. I have yeah, a like, question though. Yeah, uh-huh. tell me. Who is voting for Trump? Like, Good, enough oh, people, you'd be surprised. Right? Enough you'd people. be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Enough people. That's why yeah, I said I, we can't answer I, that so, question well. But uh, that's the amount of people who are actually, you know, smart. So uh, apparently, uh, to win, Joe Biden needs two seventy votes, two hundred and seventy votes. He, uh, sorry, two electoral votes. He's already up to two sixty four on the last time I counted. So only six more votes to go. Yeah. Uh, and Trump is down at two one three. He could still win. Uh, because whoever wins a particular state gets all the the votes from that, all the electoral votes from that state, and that's how the system works. But uh, Biden seems like he's just he's about to win. At least it looks like looks like that as of now. The last I heard, just before mm-hmm. this recording. Uh, so I think that's some good news, and uh, we'll have uh, the first uh, half Indian vice president <laughs> we've ever had from in Kamala Antrik, Harris. Antrik, Antrik, who's your local area MLA, by the way? I have no idea. Who gives a shit? <laughs> 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 I literally, I remember in the last in the last election okay, in my mayor area, of Mumbai, mayor of Mumbai. Ah, <laughs> uh, hey, कभी कभी लगता है आप नहीं मेयर हैं. अरे, so in the last election that happened in uh, our locality, like the uh, last uh, national election that happened, I voted for a person. I didn't, I don't even know what this person does. If she's on the right side of uh, my ideology or not, I voted for a person called Joy. Because I thought, okay, let's just have a little more joy in the world. Uh, and that, I had no idea. I had no idea who these names are. I did not want to vote for the people who are in power right now. And I ended up voting for some a little more joy. That was me. But uh, anyway, let's get to uh, breaking gender stereotypes in movies and TV shows. Uh, yeah, the first thing that I that comes to my mind is one of my favorite movies is Kill Bill. Is uh, played by Uma Thurman. I don't know if you guys have seen this. The movie is directed by Quentin Tarantino. And uh, Uma Thurman plays this amazingly badass samurai warrior who is out for revenge uh, against uh, basically the people who have wronged her and killed her child. She's out for revenge against his people. And there's like amazing sword fights with amazing choreography in the movie. And uh, Uma Thurman couldn't be literally more badass in this. So that was like a cool thing because not very often you you get to see... uh, Women as samurais, women under the role of uh, taking, uh, you know, in, in the revenge taking role, uh, out for vengeance, uh, that kind mm-hmm. of. So, was the, I think it was a very, I think I think it was a very important movie for its time as well, uh, because a lot of the main cast of the movie were women, like Lucy Liu, again a great actress on the on the movie in the movie again she was amazingly, amazing an amazing antagonist uh, for Uma Thurman's character. Uh, so yeah, that would be my the first movie I would like to talk about. Uh, what about you, Ma- uh, Mas? Uh, so obviously, you would have guessed I have a long list, and we don't have all the time in the world for this show. Yeah. But uh, you know, since uh, a lot of my guests are Indian, we'll stick to the Indian context. Okay. Uh, you know, as far as movies, etc., is concerned. Yeah. So for me, I see gender stereotypes pretty much everywhere. You know, so for me, it's not restricted to movies. I see it in cartoons. I raised a petition. With a yeah. cartoon company asking them to give a character in the cartoon her own TV show. Oh wow! So yeah, can you yeah. tell us a little more about Chota. that? 
Yeah, so actually I'm a change maker with change.org and we um, have a fellowship called She Creates Change with yeah. about 120 women in the country, yeah. 150 actually. And we sort of start different campaigns and uh, I do a lot of work in the gender stereotyping space. Oh, yeah. So my petition was asking the makers of Chota Bheem. Have you heard of this character? The, do you know? The cartoon show. The cartoon show. Beam, beam, beam. Chota beam, chota beam. We suddenly got more kids listeners on this episode. Great. <laughs> yeah. No, it's you good, could good. have a lot of parents. To listen to podcasts. You could have a lot, of, could have a lot exactly. of parents right, listen right, right, to this. Yeah, right, so it's got about 20 million viewership. Okay. It's huge. Like tier two cities, tier three cities, villages. Very, very popular. And it's got this one character called Chutki. Okay. And Chutki is this typical gender stereotypical girl with two chotis and some blush on and her mother's telling her don't climb trees you don't go out with the boys so uh, my petition was asking the makers of chota beam gold, green gold animation to give chutki her own tv show so my hashtag was make chutki stronger hashtag make chutki stronger okay so the petition you know went viral um, i was on the cover page of midday on women's day along with my son Wow. And uh, Green Gold wow. Animation came back and said, "We'll make a Chutki show." So they are in the process of making one right now. Well, wow, that's so that's so cool. Oh, like, wow. how many? Uh, like, if I can ask, just for future reference, how many votes that petition end up getting? Because then we'll know. Okay, that is the very minimum you need for a new TV show to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one was pretty big. So actually, Rajiv, who is the founder of Green Gold, came back to me on day three. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think it for me, okay. I, I feel that it was a good marketing gig for him as well, right? Yeah, yeah let's have sense. more women right, heroes right, right. in the cartoon space. Yep. But we hit about 10,000 signatures in about uh, 10 days. Okay, and uh, uh, Costa yeah. handles our social media, so Costa, now you know, buddy. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, cool. so cartoon space, you'll see all of this, right? And it's filled with Superman, Batman, Hulk. All of these characters, you'll see them on TV and yep. they're pretty much there. But you'll have this one Dora. Huh, and that correct. Dora is someone who we really like because she's climbing trees and mountains and doing adventurous stuff. So, yes, the narrative is changing to have a Frozen. Yeah, right? correct. And in fact, yeah. I, I recently had a guest on my show who is rewriting fairy tales. And she said her daughter asked her, why does Frozen not have muscles? Why do all of these princesses have slender arms? So yeah, she ended sure. up writing a, a book called The Weightlifting Princess. So, yeah, Frozen is another example of breaking gender stereotypes. And there is, uh, uh, you know, Dora in the in the kid space. And then movies, plenty of them, yeah. Uh, that was, I, uh, just quickly, before you get into that, the, you have one more uh, change or petition, uh, which is in the works right yeah. now, right? Yeah. Could we yeah, talk about yeah. that one as well? I, I, are any of you parents, by the way? No. No. Okay. Okay. Would you like to change your child's diapers when you become parents? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think I will have to. <laughs> Would you like to? Would you have to? There's a difference. Uh, who? We wouldn't want to mess with the... <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, women also don't want to mess with the diaper. But yeah. the fact is, as parents, it's a responsibility, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. this responsibility is not... As a manual, nahi hai. there is no manual that a mother has to change diapers. Correct. We also came Correct. out not learning about these things, right? So when I became Correct. a mother, nobody told me, oh, it's your job. But it's an ingrained job. Why? And there are a lot of fathers that are actually changing diapers. And, you know, we're not getting, they're not getting the credit and there's no narrative around this. So my petition is asking um, the leading diaper company Pampers to put the father's image along with the mother's on the diaper wrapper oh, wow. for one of their product ranges in 10 different countries. Yeah, the narrative wow. needs to that change. Makes, yeah, absolutely. That makes so, so much, of course. Antarik, since you have a YouTube, uh, you know, subscription and you watch YouTube a lot, there's actually a channel Yep. Pampers has a dedicated channel on how to change your diapers. And guess who's featuring on that? The mother. Mothers. Yeah. So, you wow. know, it's, it's just such a cliched space. And I think that needs to change. So my petition is hashtag Papa Pampers 2. Hashtag Daddy Diaper Badlo. Hashtag Papa Pampers 2. <laughs> that's very cool. That's, that's fun. That's, that's a fun hashtag. Yeah. Very cool. That's uh, very yeah. nice. So uh, and, getting back and to... And the entire motive as well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, correct. Uh, getting back to the 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 TV show or the movie that you want to talk about, would you like to just uh, run into that? Yeah, so I'll just kind of list down a couple of them. Okay, sure. So, you know, when we talk about gender stereotypes, the first thing that comes to our mind is women breaking stereotypes. Correct. For me, it's both genders, literally. Yeah. Okay, you know? sure. And there are a lot of cliches related to men saying, Mard ko dard nahi hota, angry young man. Yeah. Bhaiya, mard ko dard kyun nahi hota? Mard insaan hai. 
right yeah, in fact there was this entire movie called mark kodar nahi correct so i mean why so for me there are a lot of movies uh, you know that inspire me for both men and women yeah. uh, padman is a very inspirational movie yeah. and when you watch that you kind of realize that it it's so difficult for a man to even step up and talk about a woman related issue yeah. so i kind of really like that then there was this one more movie called sui dhaga varun dhawan and anushka sharma yeah yeah of course yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he wants to sort of make clothes. He's a gown wala, wanting to you know turn into a designer making clothes. And because he's in the tailoring profession, which is such a different stereotypical thing from what he is what he is expected to do, uh, but he ends up doing very well for himself. Then, of course, there is the Mary Coms of the world, yep. and uh, you know you have the Dangal, yeah. Shakuntala Devi. One movie I wanted um, to talk about, if I can quickly squeeze that in, was NH10, uh, hmm. starring uh, Anushka Sharma. Have, have either of you seen that? No, no, no. I okay. heard about it. Okay, though. so the movie again. Uh, th- this now I'm realizing this seems like a pattern. Is a she was kidnapped. Yeah, she was kidnapped, but then uh, her yeah, I remember, fiance I is and her fiance is killed by the kidnappers, and she yeah. then she goes back for revenge. I guess so. My recommendations are about revenge and making sense in that context. Anyway, uh, Salma, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, so you know Dangal, some of these yeah, movies correct. for sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, one thing for sure, which is literally in your face with gender stereotypes, is the Ekta Kapoor shows. I mean, oh, how much yeah. more stereotypical can we get? Correct, correct. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the so I kind of was us... <laughs> exactly <laughs> like why? Yeah. Why what? is it that yeah. that a mal? Huh. Why, oh, yeah, why right. couldn't the husband be in the rasoda? Why, why wasn't he as one of the options? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Why exactly. not? Absolutely. Correct. So you know, like a lot of stuff, women are crying all the time, and there is a mother-in-law's daughter-in-law issue, and you know what is this? Like, what the hell? What rubbish is this? Where do they get this stuff from? And we somewhere creating this narrative, which is very wrong. So there are movies that are breaking this narrative in many ways, and uh, you know, there's this show called Those Little Things. Uh, the li- uh, little, things. things. little things, Netflix, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. If yeah. you look at the relationship between the boy and the girl, they definitely talk about stereotypes in many yeah. ways. Yeah. But they're also breaking many, right? Correct. Yeah. So she is paying the bill many a times, Correct. and that's fine. No, that's you know. So, fine. so I think those are shows that we need to have. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Also, Damn it, it, my girlfriend. <laughs> Tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, that's what. That's what. Me. The husband could be there, but he might not be making the food. He might be just, you know. <laughs> yeah. He, he's the awesome. one asking. Arey, mera laptop dhota kona. <laughs> Sorry. But there are there are the men who cook a lot more these days. Yeah, yeah. I, I cook I, by the way. Yeah, I started cooking. I just cooking. want to plug that in by the way. Yeah, I, I cook. Yeah. Well. And I've started uh, cooking. Like so, my during this lockdown, my entire family has gone crazy about cooking, because my dad mm. has ended up buying uh, an extra OTC oven. Like the the big one, the forty five liter OTC oven. He's bought an, oh, wow. an electric tandoor. He's bought an induction uh, plate, a new induction plate. He's he's gone crazy just buying kitchen appliances. Oh, wow. So now that they're there, we have, someone has to use them. So every day yeah, in the kitchen, absolutely. the evening, there are like five people in the kitchen making different things. It is just madness. So Antarish, so, next episode of IVM likes in your house, okay? Yeah, With okay, chalo done. Done, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> barbecue party. Barbecue party. <laughs> awesome, great. Um, Yeah, uh, Kostov. Anything you'd like to talk about here? Uh, no, I didn't come prepared. Oh, wow. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, so basically, my recommendation would be uh, the most legendary movies that I've watched so far. It is about um, it's zero dark thirty. Oh uh, man! Wow. It's it's one hell of a movie, man. Uh, the plot is around Osama bin Laden, yeah. right? Yeah. So how they kill Bin Laden uh, after the attacks? Yeah. Um, uh, you know uh, how uh, they figured out it's, his it's location. It's based on true events. Yeah. Correct. Led. Uh, it's based on true events. They say that, but it is what actually might have happened because you know. Uh, however, there are some conspiracies that Bin Laden is still alive. Yeah. But we'll get to that later. Uh, so Maya, who uh, figures out the entire uh, investigation That's a character uh, when it name, comes right? to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's uh, her. Her real name is Jessica Chastain or Chastain. I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay. Uh, she uh, Jessica Chastain. Figured out. I know, I know. Jessica Chastain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She uh, figured out where Bin Laden is located, and she forced the authorities above in in the U.S. government to you know uh, uh, just get on with it and ha- get an arrest warrant or probably take some action on it. And it took over a hundred days to get authorization after figuring out look uh, Bin Laden's location. Uh, it's one hell of a movie. 
Yeah, um, I think it. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it won a couple of Oscars, and I think it got. Yeah, I've heard about. Yeah, it. one of the yeah. Oscars it won, and this is a very cool fun fact about this movie was for best director. I think the if I'm not wrong, the director of the movie is Catherine Bigelow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Catherine Bigelow is the director of the movie. Who uh, was married to director James Cameron, who's the director of Titanic, yeah. Avatar, mm-hmm. and what have you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Zero Dark Thirty came out the same year Avatar came out. So one is direct. They had already divorced by then. Uh, they were ex-husband and ex-wife by then. Uh, but they both released uh, Avatar, which is one of his biggest movies ever. And then she released Zero Dark Thirty, which is one of her mo- biggest movies ever in the same year. And they both got nominated for best director. And then Catherine Bigelow ended up winning. uh which is again very very wow. so many gender stereotypes in a totally different context that you probably didn't mm. even think of or so so yeah man yeah, that's cool. a fun fact by the way yeah. i didn't yeah, know that yeah even but... i didn't know that yeah wow cool. yeah. antrik you follow the oh, the pizzas the paparazzi <laughs> yeah, yeah. all the articles Dude, are out there i live yeah. i live for <laughs> stupid trivia man this is great <laughs> this is right down my alley love this stuff i'll come for i'll, I'll come for gossip next time <laughs> okay <laughs> you know? uh, episode of ivm likes gossip <laughs> <laughs> in fact, Adrish can never sort of run out of so- small talk or impressing someone, right? He's just got so much information that is so relatable. Oh, yeah. thank you, man! Yeah. Wow, this is just, uh, to that man. Great, that's a new recommendation uh, for anyone out there. <laughs> Adrish <Antarish> Tucker. <laughs> awesome. This yeah. is. Uh, I think we've already had uh, a great talk about this. I think that brings us to the end of the episode. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, Almas, anything else you'd like to talk about on this topic? No, so just one observation here. If you've noticed, a lot of recommendations have been about women, women breaking yeah. gender stereotypes. Yeah. Why can't we look at men. and and uh, the problem is a lot of people don't even realize that there are stereotypes related to men. Absolutely. Like I'll give you a couple of stereotypes, and you as men will be able to relate to yeah. it. This power, to, uh, you know, this pressure to have a full time job, to have a stable income. You can't take a sabbatical. You know, you have to provide no matter what. You can't cry openly. Yeah. You know, you have to enjoy a cricket and a football. It's just so many stereotypes. I think men have been. a uh, sort of pressurized to do things unnecessarily so for me you know uh, we need to have a lot of narratives there bala was one of my favorite movies the one that came out recently yeah, with yeah, ayushman khurana yeah right? of course yeah. Yeah, so this yeah. whole this whole narrative that a man needs to be uh, you know a certain size and needs to have hair and needs to look a certain type i mean that's a stereotype again so we need to have more movies and more the uh, uh, entertainment out there which is breaking gender stereotypes for men as well yep correct and i'm Absolutely. so sorry i just remember i did not uh, plug your show better in the beginning could you please give, uh, tell us a few things about uh, beyond cliche the the podcast okay so beyond is beyond and cliche cliche is yep. a french word that means stereotype and that's a part of my uh, the intro of my show as well so people who have actually moved beyond stereotypes so every week i bring in every thursday we bring in a guest where we talk about their journey of breaking a gender stereotype so if you look at the kind of people we've interviewed so far you would have a range of people so right from uh, a, a like right from a, a woman a music composer yeah. to let's say a single dad to so somebody who's working in the positive masculinity space to a motorcycling diva who we have today in fact the show is getting launched today to let's say somebody who has been a woman who's climbing mountains yeah. uh to you know a man who's a, who's an adoptive father so i've got like a range there yeah Okay. Wow. Very cool. Thank you so much again, Almas Costa, for joining us on this episode. That brings us to the end of the episode. Almas, where can people find you if they want to follow you online? Yeah. So I'm on Instagram, Almas Virani underscore one 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 one, and Twitter is Almas Virani one one. Facebook is Almas Virani. All right. Yeah. That's uh, where I'm. Costa, what about you? I wish I could plug my meme page into this, but I'd rather not because it's it, it might uh, showcase what I actually am about. But yeah, you all can follow me. <laughs> But you have uh, a meme can... page? Yeah, I okay. have actually like two of them. What? Oh. I'd rather not. I'd rather Fun not fact. disclose. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, yeah so um, you all can find me on Instagram or at Costa thirteen zero seven. That's K A U S T A V thirteen zero seven. However, I'm not a public account. Uh, so I'll send in the request, and, and you can not. DM him to find out what those meme pages are. Of course, <laughs> yes, please do, please do. I, I, I'll, I'll be able to say, tell that in private. However, but not in public because okay. Wow, now I really want to know what is this super offensive I'll, content on this meme page? <laughs> it's 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 uh, dark memes. Dark more memes. Than, uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, very cool, man. Uh, yeah. Cool, awesome, and uh, you guys can if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at Antarikshti and on Twitter at Antarikshtak. 
uh, that's T A K at the end of Antriksh. Thank you so much, guys. You guys have been awesome. See you guys soon. See ya. Bye. See Thank ya, you. Bye bye. Whether you're an established sports person or a budding one, or simply a sports enthusiast, join us, Tanvi and Shlok. We are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy, mindset, and everything sport. So tune in to the Millennial Athlete every Monday only on the IVM Podcast Network. Trust us, it's going to be lit. Peshe khidmat hai aapki shaan mein hamare anjuman se. Hi, I am Sadaf and I am Arshad. Khane ka itihas, economics, policy, psychology. सब है मेन्यू पर ओनली ऑन द नान काली पॉडकास्ट एवरी वेंसडे सिर्फ आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट ऐप या वेबसाइट पर या फिर जहाँ से भी आप अपने पॉडकास्ट सुनते हो